Hello again. A few days ago, we looked at critical race theory, an idea which originated in the United States and then spread to Britain. From being some obscure idea of strictly limited academic interest, the concepts of critical race theory have found their way now into everyday life. We are all aware that the police, both in Britain and America, are institutionally racist. We know about white fragility, microaggressions, and many of us are now beginning to swallow the idea that all white people are either openly or secretly racist. Racism in Western society, by this reading of the situation, has never been so widespread or prevalent. This is really odd because most of us have noticed precisely the opposite state of affairs over the last few decades. In other words, rather than more racism, we see less and have the impression that it is fading away rather than growing like a cancer. When I was a child in the 1950s and 60s, Racism, or racial prejudice, racialism as it was more commonly known in those days, was all but universal. Many public houses would not serve black people. One would see signs saying things such as room to let, no coloureds. And a mixed race couple in the street could expect to attract dirty looks and catcalls. I was engaged to an Indian girl in the early 1970s and remember people shouting Paki lover at me as we walked in the street with our arms around each other. It's just how things were 50 years ago. 50 years ago, white people talking among themselves would think nothing of using words like wog or coon, and it was quite acceptable to express a desire not to give a job to a black person or to want one living next door. People selling their houses would assure the neighbours that they were not going to sell the property to a black person or Pakistani. Such a development would be, mean property prices in the street plummeting and people would mutter to each other, there goes the neighbourhood, if they saw a black family arriving with a removal van. All this is like another world today. You can't, I mean, I personally can't imagine that anybody... Uh, really still thinks, let alone talks in this way. It must be at least 25 years since I've heard any offensive word for black people used in my presence. I simply can't, I, one doesn't hear uh, offensive terms for black people anymore. It's not just that I move in particularly progressive circles, I move amongst working class white people. Those words and those attitudes just seem to have gone now. Which is a great mercy, I have to say. One might think all this is cause for celebration. That we are more tolerant and easygoing than was once the case. And that the prejudice is fading away. Except that hand in hand, with a reduction in genuine prejudice and the outward manifestations of racial prejudice, have come claims that all that has happened is that racism has gone underground. It's still around, even more than it used to be, but racists, which of course means every single white person, have grown cunning and crafty and learned to conceal how they feel. It's not that there's less racism, it's just that people are more uh, adept at concealing their racism. In other words, the less racial prejudice we actually see, the more there is around. <laughs> it sounds quite mad when I put it like that, but that at least is the thesis which is being advanced amongst um, many so-called progressive people. In the late 1990s, the lack of obvious and blatant racism had become so worrying that efforts were made to come up with a means of showing that it was still going as strong as ever. It was just hiding. This was when the implicit association test was devised at Harvard University. Rather than just asking people if they would be upset if their daughter married a black man, 
or they would be annoyed to find a black family moving in next door. After all, people lie about these things. The implicit association test asks all sorts of cunning questions to reveal those awful racial prejudices that you hope to conceal. On the screen, you might be shown a black face and then asked to press a key on your keyboard, which chooses between two sets of words. On the one side are the words bad and black, and on the other, white and good. Of course, only a dyed-in-the-wall racist or complete idiot would indicate that he thought bad and black were a good choice. What happens, though, when the choices are good and black, or bad and white? What about a name like Shanice? Would you choose pleasant or unpleasant for that? If all this sounds a little bit demented, well, it is. However, the implicit association test is widely used on civil servants, applicants for jobs in the police, a host of other things. Here's the thing which nobody ever mentions, though. Doing the test once is utterly useless. You might find the first time you do it, you're told that you have um, an unconscious bias against black people. Do it again and you might be told that you favour black people. Hesitate too long over your answers and that counts against you, which makes some people a little edgy. The reason is that you might be trying to work out what is the right and appropriate answer rather than showing your real feelings. In fact, to be even remotely accurate, someone would have to take the test a couple of dozen times and then all the answers have to be averaged out. Not that anybody in real life ever takes it more than once. It's just, um, it's completely uh, pointless, it's worthless. In the description to this video, I give a link to Project Implicit website at Harvard. Uh, you can take the test for yourself there and it's m amusing to take it a few times and see how different the results are each time. I'm wondering if other people have noticed that racism in the real world is actually on the decrease and have been amused to find that the less we see black people discriminated against, the more we're accused of being racist. When we see things like the implicit association test being administered millions of times a year, it's almost as though people are alarmed at the decline of racial prejudice and they're resorting to desperate means to try and persuade everybody that there's still as much racism around as ever. I'd be curious to know what people make of this idea.